that was low. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Sea Fishing with CJ. Um, I've seen a lot of posts recently from people saying they've been out and they blanked and they blanked and they blanked. Um, and what it occurs to me is that um, what they need to develop is a good scratching rig. Now I'm not saying just go out and catch a little fish, but um, it's always worth having a scratching rig out. If you're fishing two rods, have one rod with something decent and one rod with a scratching rig on. If you're only fishing with one rod, then alternate the two. So fish for a while with a decent bait or a large bait and then fish for a while with a scratching rig. Now the beauty of scratching rigs is that they will catch big fish too. And last year I caught a smooth hound on a scratching rig, which is basically very similar to this scratching rig here. So they were tiny hooks and it still picked up an eight pounds per smooth hound. Admittedly it was a bit of a struggle getting it in, but it did land it. So we're going to look at the scratching rig. We're going to fish with a scratching rig tonight and hopefully not going to blank on it and disprove my theory. Uh, and then we'll go into detail how to make a scratching rig. And then I have a proposition to you. I have got all of the components to make a decent two hook Paternoster scratching rig, save the blank rig. Uh, and we'll talk about that later in the video. But basically here we've got it. We've got um, a five ounce lead at the end here. We've got, I'm using a uh, hook release system. The first, the first snood is clipped into that. And then the second snood is into a cascade. It's held in a cascade there. And that's held in place with a spring at the top of the, uh, of the um, rig body. And of course that clips onto your main line and away you go. So the two hook, save the blank, Paternoster scratching rig whichever order you want to put that in but that's what it is and we're going to be looking at that and we're going to be fishing with that tonight so let's see what we can do with it okay so we've got that one rigged up we've got we've already got three rods out to be truthful um i've got my scratching rig on my uh, ziplex 2500 i've got um a whole bluey small bluey out on that hoping to pick up some sort of raymondo and I've got ever popular crab can out on the middle rod there just to see if we can't get a little bit of underwater action. Uh, I'll be swapping that over to a scratching rig so we'll have two scratching rigs out. So we've got um, our two backup rigs ready to go. So on the right we've got the scratching rig, it's all baited up and ready to go. Two hook scratching rig and on the left I've got a bluey on a up and over sliding ledger. Uh, so we'll be whacking that out as well. So those are my backup leads and that's essentially what I've got out on the two rods that are fishing at the moment. As I say, the third rod has got a camera on it. And we'll see if we get any action on that. Well, the scratching rig has lived up to its name. And it has scratched me out a lovely little Place. Is it a little place? Yeah. So, I say scratching rig. Nice little place. And you can tell it's a place, well, I mean the number of ways you can tell it's a place. One, it's got those nice bright orange spots. The other, the other telltale is if you run your hand backwards on it, it's smooth and it's smooth in both directions. It has these bony knobs on top of its head. So just there, there's some bony knobs. All right. And the underside of it is a healthy white. Flounders kind of look a bit insipid. All right, so we can get this fish back in the water. It's too small to keep. Uh, and we'll have a look at how we make this rig. I'm going to show you how I make my two hook Paternoster scratching rig. So no more ado, let's uh, put this bad boy together and we'll talk about it and various components of it. You want to be using, um, I, I recommend 60 pound um, leader as your main rig body. Now that allows for um, casting and it, and it gives a bit of extra strength for the knots etc. Now I'm using orange um, grease weasel here, but the reason I'm using orange 
is, is so that you can see it when I'm building it. I would, I would generally, I would use clear or grey grease weasel. But I mean, there are other manufacturers and there are other lines out there, and it's up to you to set the price of that. It comes with 4.95 for um, 40 meters of that. So I mean, that works out quite cheap. So using um, about a meter of it, 40, 40 rig you'll get out of this. So um, work that out. So we use a bit of grease weasel that goes from the tip of our nose with our head turned away to the tips of our fingers. And so that gives us a piece of line that is, I don't know, best part of a metre long. Generally work to that. Now your hook lengths, your hook snoods, want to be a th just under a third of that length. And, and I'll explain why that is when we come to that part of the, uh, the build. But the first thing we want to attach to this is the bottom swivel. So um, the bottom swivel, we want to use one of these um, large size, um, I think they're size five power swivels. And what I'm using is a four and three Grinner knot. So we go through the eye of the swivel, we go around one, two, three, four, and then we go back through three times. Back through and around itself three times. So through the eye and then back through the loop once, twice, three times. Now the reason we go four and three is that the, th the three sit down in between the four and it cinches down and makes a nice neat knot. And we're always going to use a little bit of saliva on there just to help that knot cinch down. And we pull it down tight. Pull on the tag in there, and we've got a nice little knot on there, nice and neat knot. Uh, we want to get rid of that tag end. You don't have to leave great long tag ends because this is such a good knot, it doesn't slip. So trim off the, the tag end, give it one last tug. Okay, and so that is the first part of the rig tied on. Now, what we need to do is we need to put all the components onto here in a sequence. So this is the top of the rig. So we're gonna feed those from this end. So we're gonna put a crimp on these tiny little crimps. So the crimp goes on. A bead. my specs on for this, this is all a bit fiddly. So there we have it. So we have a crimp, a bead, we want a swivel and these are size 10 uh, power swivels or equivalent. That so goes on and we want another bead So then we have, we have the, the swivel strap there. We then want to put a spring, which is what gives tension to this whole thing and keeps it all together in the cast. So the stainless steel spring goes on there above that. The reason we have the bead is to stop the, the um, spring feeding up into the, um, into the eyes of the swivel, causing it to jam. Now, as you know, Jason and I from the Eastbourne Fisherman, we started a campaign of support your local tackle shop. So because the spirit of that, we're not competing with the tackle shops. All of the components of this rig have come from local tackle shops. All I'm doing really is I'm saving you the trouble of having to hunt this stuff around and then I'm putting it into a box so it's all in one place. So that's the first bit, and then the first crimp, the second crimp. So the second crimp has gone on there. So there we have it, the first trapped swivel uh, with a spring above it. 
We're now going to do the next trap swivel. So we need another crimp. Another bead. A cascade swivel. So this is a cascade swivel. And that wants to go on so that it's the right way up because obviously when we when we trap it that's the, the the tag of the cascade has got to be pointing downwards to catch the hook uh, and you think that the bead is going to feed over that but it isn't all right and then another bead the dog's trying to join in i think you've seen a pigeon or something outside final bead and then the last thing that's going to go on there is another crimp Now, lots of people talk about crimps and, and when you're crimping line, you do have to be careful that you're not over crimping it because you don't want to be damaging the line. So that's all of the components of the Paternoster. Last thing we're going to put on there is the thing that you're clipping your lead to. And I'm going to use one of these spring clips. OK, um, I go for the heavier duty ones, uh, which are normally brown in color. And it's the same knot at the bottom. So it's one two, three, four, through the eye of the knot, and then round three times. One, two, three, and then as Sandman, Paul Sandman, Edward says, a bit of gob oil on there, and then cinch that knot down. And there we have it. So there is the body of the Paternoster. Now I've got, we've got to decide now what is going to be our uh, bait release. Now we have a choice of bait releases. You could use something like that, which is a Cox and Rawl impact um, release. You could use another clip like this, which has got a little bait release on it. I'm not a great fan of those. Um, we could be using Trident Tackle Kicker. Or a Trident Tackle Rotor Clip. Um, we could use a Gemini, big fan of Geminis personally, I like Geminis, and you can get the weights with the Gemini clip already mounted on it. So, um, great piece of kit. Or, going back to the Cox and Rawl imp, that is the original imp. Uh, look, it's been used, it's got a bit of weed on it. Um, that's the original imp. Um, forget who makes those. And then there are any number of uh, breakaway leads that've got um, bait releases on it. This one, this is quite an effective one. Um, but you've got to decide which one you're going to use because it's going to it's going to impact upon how long or where you're going to position your snoods. So I'm going to use I think I'm going to use my preferred method, which is the Gemini, the Gemini um, splashdown or or whatever. So we'll put all these up to one side. And we're going to attach this to my, my rig tying board um, with a bit of elastic to keep it taut. All right, so we'll look at that in a second. So, so here we got, we've got the rig body and I've got it attached to my board, my rig tying board. Uh, there's elastic band at the top end there just to keep it nice and taut. Just makes it easier for when we're going to do the next part, which is positioning it all. Next thing we've got to do is we've got to tie our hook snoods. Now the hook snood, the line I'm going to use to tie my hook snoods to, but again, this is up to you what you put on here. I'm going to use 20 pound amnesia. Um, this is actually five pound 50 for 328 feet. Uh, again, you get an awful lot of um, rigs out of that. Um, I like amnesia because um, as the name suggests, it has no memory. So you, you, get, a, you get a twist in it. It doesn't, it doesn't keep that twist, it drops out, which is really good. And amnesia originally came as a backing line. That's what it was for. But then, you know, see how 
and everybody got hold of it and because it has this this lack of memory um, and it's it's good for that and it's a clear line it's 20 pound braking strain a um, couple of reasons why we go for 20 pound one if you do pick up a big fish it's, it's not going to bite through that too easily and two if you have it any lighter than that it, it's a bit too light it flops around this gives it a little bit of rigidity we're going to tie uh, the first thing we're going to put on there well first thing we need to think about is these hook snoods want to be a third of this length and the reason we want it as a third of the length is we want one snood to be clipped down here to our lead we want the second snood to be clipped down to the cascade and we want it as far away uh, less than its distance from that clip so that when it hits the water and releases there's nothing for it to get caught on so this means if you want to use longer snoods you have to make a longer rig body okay so let's have a look at this in, in lengthwise um, if i go for thirds i know that it's going to be shorter than that by the time i've tied knots in it so that's the full length so we'll cut that and we'll cut it in half and then we'll trim a bit more off So what's a third, two thirds? It's part of about two thirds there, isn't it? So two thirds. Cut those into two bits into half. It is a scratching rig, so you don't want to be using great long snoods, I would suggest. So then we've got two links, so two hook snoods. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put a stop on those snoods. Now it's important that you have a stop because it stops the bait, bait rising up the line. So you can adjust this so that the, um, the, the bait is nice and tight on the hook. And the stops that we're going to use is these little um, rubber stops. Now they come on a little wire loop. So you put the line through the loop like so and then slide the stop off on onto it it's a little bit of a pull so there we have it we have the stop onto the this hook snood there and as you say because i said this is amnesia it does lose its memory a little bit okay and then we're going to tie the hook onto that so we're going to use size two and these are size 2 C-match specials, okay? Now, they're an ultra-fine, very sharp hook. And I also like them because they are slightly offset. So I don't know if you can see that, but they have an offset in them. So it doubles their hookability. And although I've been using those knots, I do like to tie my hooks on using just a blood knot. So we go through there and we twist it. One, two, three, four, five five six seven put it through the eye a little bit of gob oil and pull that down now i've heard lots of people criticizing blood knots and saying good things about them and bad things i've never had a blood knot fail on me and the beauty of a blood knot is if i want to change that hook i can just pull on the knot and it will come free leave a tag on it the reason we leave a tag on it is because it helps hold the worm in place when we're using worms on these rigs. So there's nothing wrong with having a bit of tag. There's about half an inch of tag there, maybe a little bit more than half an inch actually. That's good. All right. So that's our first hook snood tied. And we'll repeat that with the second one. So there we have it, second, the second snood. Now we need to tie these to one to the cascade and one to the swivel. So again, We'll do the same knot again, blood knot. You'll see why this is on this taut board in a minute. Now, of course, you could put all sorts of little attractors onto these hook snoods. You could put beads on it. You could put bits of sequin, um, little flashers, what have you. But that's for your, that's your choice. So there's the first hook snood on there. Let's do the second one. Where's it gone? See, 
always go seven. I don't know why, but a seven seems to be a magic number for me. Chinese think seven is a very lucky number. Hence, why so many people come and visit the Seven Sisters. So we'll just get rid of the little tags on those. We don't want anything that's going to get caught up and hooked up and catch these lines. Leave a little bit of tag, just gives it a little bit of strength, but we don't want much. So there's a little tiny tag on there and a little tiny tag on there. Right, the first one of these snoods that we're going to rig up is the bottom one. It's important that we do it in this order. All right, so we'll clip it in to our uh, bait release. So it's clipped into our bait release because it's important that we do that because we want to make sure that it's at the right length for that. So in this case, it's a Gemini, it's clipped into the Gemini, and we're gonna slide that up, and we're gonna slide the bead and the crimp up so it's holding it taut, all right? Very important that we're holding this taut because we wanna make sure that the, the little cascade hook is pointing downwards during the cast. Now I use a pair of crimping pliers. You can pick these up. If you haven't got these, then you can use pliers or you can use little side cutters. But if you're gonna use pliers or side cutters, you have to be very cautious that you don't over tighten the crimp and cause it to weaken the main line because you don't want that to happen. But these, that you, you can't over tighten them because they actually have, you know, even when they're fully closed, you can see there is a little tiny gap there. So we'll, hold, we'll use this and we'll push that crimp up until it's tight. The first crimp. So let's get it up there so it's holding the bead tight and then we crimp that in place. That's the first one on and you have two or three little crimps at that. These are only short crimps. I'm trying to go minimalistic. Um, the less bits in the water, less disturbance, less it's going to frighten the fish off. So that's now nicely crimped on there and it's not going to pull down. You can see that that bead, although it's only a tiny bead, does not feed through the cascade. And then we're going to bring the other bead and, and, and crimp down and we'll crimp that in place. So that's nicely crimped in place. All right. We're then going to hook our second snood into the cascade. So on this swivel, on this cascade, there is a little tiny tag, all right, like a little hook. Okay, now you can imagine that as soon as this releases, that will release the upper hook. In addition to help the tension, we've got a spring on here as well. So we're going to use the spring to maintain tension on this upper hook. I'm going to move around so I can, can do this from here. Um, again, we're going to push, we're going to take hold of our crimp in our crimping pliers. We're going to push this up and we're going to partially compress this spring. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of tension on the spring and then we crimp it in place. And then... We just bring that down and make sure that's holding that, that all in place. So that, that hook snood is nice and tight on there now. Okay, so let's have a little look at that close up. So we have the first hook is hooked into the, the Gemini bait release, okay. This, there's a stop on the snood so that when we put the bait on, we can push it and hold it down on the hook. The cascade swivel is held in place with two beads and two crimps. And then we've got the second snood hooked into the cascade and that goes all the way up to the top crimpage. If the, sorry, we cast this out, the uh, Gemini weight hits the water, it drives this plate up which releases the hook and both hooks are released works, I would say, 
nearly every time there's always going to be the odd occasion when things don't work but that's life um, and there you've got two hooks fishing in the tide nice small hooks um, hopefully going to pick us up a nice little sole tomorrow night or oh, <laughs> certainly pick up some whiting okay so that's my two hook scratching paternoster rig I think you'll agree that that is a beaut now there is not a single component in that tackle box in this tackle box that you're not using you have to add the line which is some sort of 60 pound um, main body line the hook snood line which i would recommend to be 20 pound um, amnesia or fluorocarbon you have to decide what sort of bait, bait release system you're going to use so whatever weight you're going to use um, and of course you need to make that decision before you start tying this together because it will impact upon the actual length of this bottom snood okay happy days trying to make up your mind like you need more time you've already spent most of mine Well, the sun's gone down now. Um, it's definitely temperatures drop with the sun going down. Um, it's quite nippy on the old fingertips. Had a little bit of activity on the scratching rod just now. We'll wind it in and check it out in a minute, I think. Um, because we all know that um, whiting and quite a lot of other fish like that will give you a rattly bite and then they just go to sleep on the end of the hook. Um, Oh no, still going, still rattling, still rattling away. Yeah, let's find that in, see what we got. See if that scratching rig has saved the blank. Something tugging on there. Well, <laughs> it's not a blank. That's all I can say. It's not a blank. Um, but, scratching rig has done what it's designed to do. And it's scratched up. Tiny little whiting. Get that on the film. And then we'll get that back in the water. As you can see, that is... a minuscule tiny white in i mean the bait was nearly as big as that scratching rig lived up to its name and scratching me up a little fish so the scratching rig strikes again left hand rod is rattling away again the old scratching rig Yeah, they're still not in. Yeah. That looks like a channel white in. So let's wind it in and see what we've got. I suspect whiting. Yep. There they are. <laughs> well, there it is. The scratching rig. Strikes again. Which is doing what it's meant to be doing, is scratching and catching fish so you're not it's not a blank. Don't have to be all little ones though, do they? And away it goes. Woo! You get those whiting in quick enough, they they get away. But they don't live out of water for very long, for sure. Okay, so the scratching rig has scratched up another little tiny whiting. Um, but, you know, it's the difference between having a fish and having a blank. If it's a little whiting, it's a little whiting. Let's get him back. 
call me a fair weather angler if you want, but I'm only fishing to the top of the tide and then I'm going to pack up and go home. I'm hungry and I'm cold. And another little whiting on the scratching rig. Last winding of the night and I've got a double header of whitings. Actually, best whiting of the night actually. They're not, you know, they're not monsters, but um, both on the scratching rig. So it just goes to show the scratching rig definitely works. Happy days. Let's get these two bad boys back in the water while they're still kicking and wriggling. And I'm going to say good night to everybody. Uh, we've had a good session on the beach. I'm actually ready for something to eat. So I might have to hit McDonald's on the way home. I don't know. So this is the, um, the rig building kit. It, there's enough items in here to make 15 two hook Paternoster scratching rigs. Um, calling it um, the save the blank two hook Paternoster scratching rig. Uh, and all you have to do is add the time and the line. Um, that's the motto. Uh, it's gonna retail at 30 pounds. Now, that sounds like quite a lot of money. Uh, the fact is, that is two pounds a rig, which I think you'll agree is quite cheap. I mean, obviously you've got to add your line to that, but the line is quite a small expense by comparison. Um, you get the satisfaction of building your own rigs, catching fish on your own rigs, and you can adjust them so you can put bigger hooks on, smaller hooks, um, put some beads and bling next to the hooks, etc., etc. Those are all things that you add, uh, but this is the basic rig. Uh, it's a scratching rig, it's using size 2 or size 3 hooks. Uh, the idea being that you will catch small fish with small hooks, but you can also catch big fish with small hooks. What you can't do is catch small fish with big hooks. Uh, it is a scratching rig. Um, I always fish with a scratching rig, um, and, I, and I seldom blank. I seldom blank. I normally catch something. And in fact, last year I, I had a, an 8 pound smooth hound on a scratching rig. So you will catch bigger fish on them. So I'm a great believer of a scratching rig. Um, certainly match anglers use them all the time. Uh, and you know, if you've been going out and you've not been catching very much, perhaps you need to downsize to something like this and give this a go. That is the plan. Um, I will put links at the bottom and, and on my banner, on my banner of my Facebook, on, on, my, the, on the banner of my YouTube channel, there's a little PayPal me um, icon. You click on that. You send me the money, you send me an email to say, or, or message to say that you want one of these kits um, with details, your name and address, etc. and I will send one to you by post straight away. Hey everybody, stay happy, stay sane, stay safe, stay fishing. <laughs>